Hello my friends, wherever you are across this great nation in the USA or anywhere else in the world, thank you for tuning in. We are talking about, well, the elephant in the room. The midterm US elections are coming up and there's a whole big hoo-ha going on in every channel you turn to looking at who's going to win or who's not going to win and all of those sorts of big sports debate going on. It is a big sport coming up this midterm election. But, you know, what are we missing these days? Really, we're missing a lot of trust. Trust is a really big issue for people. It's a big issue for everybody. Trust in media in general is at a very, very low. Is it an all-time low? Probably. Trust in the government is an all-time low. Trust in even institutions these days is extremely low. And when you don't have a lot of trust, you don't, you know, you don't feel really good because who's got your back? Everyone's starting to wonder about that. And when people feel isolated or lonely, then it's, it just gets even worse. But on this show, I like to talk about solutions. And I have an interview today with a wonderful person, a former congressman. And who cares what party he was on, really? He's a great human being and someone who is full of integrity. And that's why I wanted to interview him, not just about the midterm elections coming up, but what's the bigger picture we really need to be looking at and what are some of the solutions that we can look to and things that we can actually do ourselves as individuals and as in our communities as well to mitigate that trust issues that we're that we're having because I think too often we've just said well politics is just like that candidates may say one thing when they're on the campaign trail but then once they're elected they do another and too often we've just said okay that's just how it is but is that really okay is that really what this nation is founded upon is that really how a this republic is supposed to operate going back to the constitution no, it's not, it's not how it is, but there's a whole lot of solutions that we are going to talk about with Dr. Paul Brown. You are watching Today with Kay. I am Kay Rubicek. Please stay tuned. Have you thought about buying gold? So many people have been talking about it and perhaps you're already well in it and you've got someone already that you trust. But if you don't, if you think it's about time that you get into gold to secure your investments and your assets, then you need to talk to someone you can trust. Go to ourgoldguy.com. Talk to Ira. Mention my name and he will help you to look at your current financial situation and give you recommendations on what he thinks is the best for you. You need to go to an expert. It's not too late. Now's the time. Go to OurGoldGuy.com. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for joining me today. I'm so glad to have you on the show. I'm honored to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. You've been in Congress for, you know, quite some time up until 2015 and right. you were consistently ranked one of the most conservative members of Congress. You're known yeah. for carrying not only the constitution in one pocket, but the Bible in the other. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> we still do it. Okay. Excellent to see because this is, this is my question. Kind of, kind of beaten up because <laughs> I've carried it in my pocket all the time, but they stay there. I mean, I had to tape it all together because it's all falling apart. And I, I've been through many of these. So uh, they all get tattered and eventually I have to, to get another. Can you show it a little higher? Because I want, I want people to be reminded of how small the Constitution document is. If you turn that on the side. Uh, this, just to give you a comparison, this is by my hand. Uh, very sim small document. In fact, if you look at Article 1, which is the part of the Constitution that describes what Congress should do, Article 1, Section 1, Sentence 1 says, all legislative authority that's vested by the Constitution into the Congress 
or actually is, says all legislative authority is vested in the Congress of the United States, which should consist of a House of Representatives and a Senate, which means that only Congress constitutionally can make law. Mm-hmm. Presidents cannot constitutionally through executive order. Federal judges, not even the Supreme Court can create law. And unfortunately, both of the other branches of Congress, of the federal government today are creating law and we're letting it happen. And it's just got to stop. I think through the media, we tend to see these narratives that there's uh, big divides between those who want to follow the Constitution, those who feel that the Constitution is outdated, um, big divides between uh, conservatives, for progressives, and, and all these labels that, that are put onto people politically or we put onto ourselves. Mm-hmm. You've been in Congress as a congressman before, you know, quite some time in, in Washington, D.C., and you would have seen those divides back then. How do you think they've changed now? Are How real are those divides and how much of it is, is media narratives that are trying to split us apart? I think most of it's media narrative. Unfortunately, most Republicans in Congress are more like a moderate Democrat than, and they're, I'm not, I'm not sure there are any moderate Democrats in, in Congress anymore. But both parties are guilty of spending money that they don't have, creating a debt that's just totally unsustainable. It's going to lead us to an economic collapse of this nation. We see the inflation today when people go to the grocery store and try to buy food. Um, it is horrendously higher than it was just a year ago. Uh, my daughter is trying to buy a, a car right now, and she's having difficulty finding something that she can afford because used cars have gone up 48% as compared to just last year. And new cars have gone up 35%. Food, what you can look at what eggs have how much they've increased, how much gasoline has increased. Of course, gas has come down a little bit recently, but it's still much, much higher than it should be. We've, under the Trump administration, we're energy independent as a nation. We are not any longer. The Biden administration has totally stopped uh, the exploration on federal property. He stopped the Anwar drilling. He's stopped the Keystone Pipeline uh, all to pander to the radical uh, left environmental people. In fact, I was just looking on a news feed and they were talking about how uh, Hurricane Ian, how bad it was, was absolutely due to our burning fossil fuels in this country, which is nothing but a scare tactic. And it's a flat out lie. Uh, actually, the Hurricane season was very mild, and we've had very severe hurricanes in the past, but they use scare tactics, uh, particularly on the Democrat side. But back to your original question, is really there's not a whole lot of difference. Back, in fact, I was asked many times, Kay, when I was in Congress, how did I not uh, cave in? Some people call it drink the Potomac water. I call it uh, plod the Potomac path. Well, when I was in Congress, when I ran for Congress in 2007, a special election, I pledged to the people of the 10th Congressional District in Georgia, I would use four questions in evaluating all legislation. The first one is, is it right? Does it fit the Judeo-Christian biblical principles our nation was founded upon? Second, is it constitutional according to the original intent? Third, do we need it? Fourth, can we afford it? And all four had to be yes for me to vote yes. And I voted that way the whole four terms I was in Congress. That's the reason I was rated as the most conservative member of the entire U.S. House of Representatives by a number of different groups and multiple times. But unfortunately, most members of Congress run for the U.S. Senate or the U.S. House just because, well, just because, many different reasons. They think they can do a better job than the guy or girl that's there. They think that... uh, Maybe they have something to add, but they don't have any principles behind how they do their work as a congressman or a U.S. senator. Those four questions were my principles. Most members of Congress, their only principles are themselves and their reelection bid. And and your first principle, you were saying, is it right? Now, is that 
um, is it tr these days people are asking, is it true? Because we're, we're aware that many media narratives are not true. So when you're, you're asking yourself that question, is it right? Are you looking at it more from a, a moral standpoint of, is it, is it right for you to believe that? Or, or are you looking more from, is it true? How do, how do you define that? Well, there's only one truth and we only have one absolute truth. And that's what our creator has said is true. And uh, that is it right is based on what we're given just the same way our founding fathers overwhelmingly believe that God's inner word, the Holy Bible, uh, contained directions of how we ought to live every aspect of our lives, including public policy and politics. I believe the very same thing. So is, is it right? Does it fit the Judeo-Christian biblical principles this nation was founded upon? Now, I've had people say, well, you want a theocracy. No, I don't. Actually, people of all religious beliefs will benefit from those biblical principles of personal responsibility and accountability. Everybody will, will benefit where people are held accountable to whatever they do, good or bad. Uh, we ought to be a nation ruled by law. So everybody in this country follows the same rules, the same laws, and we see now uh, particularly under this administration, that's not what's going on. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, people like Comey, Clapper, and Brennan ought to be in prison. They ought to be tried for actually for insurrection themselves uh, because they, they've they been involved in trying to overthrow the, the Trump administration and basically were successful in doing that. The press is well. The press has become nothing but a... Um, um, I'm looking for, it's just a voice of the Democrat Party promoting that same Marxist philosophy that, that the Democrat Party has, has uh, gotten into establishing policy based on Marxism. My dad was a state senator for 38 years, and he was a Democrat here in Georgia. Uh, people like him, he was a businessman. Uh, he's not as socially conservative by any means as I am, but um, certainly he believed as a Democrat in the rule of law. He believed in, in a government that was fiscally responsible and living within your means. He was a businessman. He's one of the largest Firestone dealers in the whole country, a great public servant, a great uh, man uh, for the state of Georgia. But there aren't any Democrats like that today. And frankly, there aren't very there are very few Republicans as well. So all these problems that you're pointing out, and, and I, I do trace a lot of those back to, to socialist policies and socialism in yep. general, and what I've studied from socialism in other countries and, and witnessing different policies coming into place here, and that they've been, they've been trying to subvert and undermine here in America for their strategies have started decades ago. And, right. and, and having that personal responsibility and accountability I think is fundamentally important for us to remember that that's what their constitution is based on and that it is, it, it's really a small book. It really is a small uh, document that um, has yeah. those principles in there. So we can come back to that as a, as a foundation, but, you know, looking at the, the, the problems that you highlighted so many of the problems that we have at the moment. So people are having, there's a lot of people who are seeing those things now. I think in the past, uh, not as many people were seeing them, but now many Americans are seeing them. Many people around the world are seeing them and they're, they're concerned. Now we're having trust issues. People are distrusting the media. They're distrusting the polls. Um, the, the trust in government ins and institutions is at an all-time low. So... But I like looking for solutions and for hope and for inspiring others to really be able to look forward because if we only see the bad news we cannot forget that the bad news exists because these things are here right now but i, I right. you know how how do you recommend dealing with these things when people are feeling such distrust at the moment well i'm disgusted with what's going on in washington with both parties frankly uh, because of the spending the greater intrusion into our lives of the uh, incremental loss of liberty and freedom. Those, by the way, are two different entities. But we have seen both parties 
engaged in destroying our liberty and freedom and destroying our economic basis of this nation. And certainly they don't stand on the Constitution at all. Neither party does today. But the good news is that we have an entity in this country that actually is supreme over the Congress, over the presidency, and over the entire federal court system, and that's we the people. We the people really are the only sovereign entity in this country, and we the people can make a difference. And hopefully through interviews like this and with other people who truly understand and believe in the Constitution as our founding fathers meant for it to be, if we get those people elected and get enough of them elected, then we can make a radical change. And I, I, I believe that most Americans, when they're supplied with the education, when they're supplied with the information, that they will do the right thing. Because I think most Americans believe in rule of law. They believe in individual responsibility and accountability. They believe in limited government. They believe in low taxes. They believe in a vibrant free enterprise system. And they believe in the things that actually made this country great. And it's those things. And we've got to go back to those instead of having the federal government rule all of our lives. So for all the we the people out there watching this right now, or perhaps you're listening to this on a podcast somewhere, whatever platform you're watching or listening on, this is Today with Kay. I am Kay Rubacek and we are talking with Dr. Brown. And come right back after this short break. But before you do, click the like button, the subscribe button, and all those things you got to do to keep making sure that you don't miss an episode of this and all of our interesting guests. How is your coffee supply? Where do you get your coffee from? Is it organic? Is it made in America? Well, if you're willing to try another brand, I can recommend Freedom First Coffee. All organic, roasted here in the US, and it tastes delicious. You can try it from freedomfirstcoffee.com. Put in the promo code K, that's K-A-Y, that's my name, You'll get a discount and you'll give a few bucks back to this show. The founders of Freedom First Coffee believe in freedom and their tagline is taste like freedom. I like the taste of this coffee and I hope you will too. Give it a try. Go to freedomfirstcoffee.com and use the promo code K. And if you've already got your own favorite coffee, don't worry. You can buy me one. Go to my website, krubacek.com. That's K A Y. R-U-B-A-C-E-K dot com and click on the link Coffee with K. There you can buy me a virtual coffee for a couple of bucks and that helps to keep this show going. It helps to keep me being able to provide more free information. Like for example, the last ebook that I put out, you can get that for free on my website. It's called Nowhere Left to Run, 10 Steps to Survive Tyranny Today. You can download that for free on my website because I am an independent creator and investigator, researcher, writer, and many other things. And your support, every coffee helps very much. Thank you. I appreciate you, whether you buy the coffee or not. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to the interview. Now, it is excellent to be talking with you, Dr. Brown, because we are educating ourselves you are very well educated well versed in this and i think we have so much division or apparent division in our society that we forget that we actually have so much more in common uh, than we like to ever imagine and actually our diversity is what makes us human and absolutely wonderful what are you seeing as a bigger picture that we need to be paying attention to right now well, right now, we need to be looking at what the candidates stand for. We've got to stop electing people on personality, whether it's uh, they're nice people or not, whether it's a male or a female, what color of their skin is, even what party they belong to. We need to ask the hard questions of our candidates. We also need to look at what they're saying and what we're getting in the mail and all the phone calls. We need to write those things down. And hold them accountable. Let's hold them accountable to what they say, what they promise. 
Because how many times have we seen people that promise one thing and then they go to Washington and do something totally different? That's the reason a lot of people are disgusted and that they have lost confidence in their U.S. senators and their U.S. congressmen because they tell us one thing while they're running for office and then they go to Washington and do something else. Particularly on the Republican side, my side, you hear people say, we've got to lower the taxes, we've got to stop the out-of-control spending, we've got to reduce the size of government, and then they go to Washington and they vote for more spending, more taxes, more debt, more uh, government that's going to take away our liberty and freedom. So we've got to hold those people accountable. And if they don't do what they said, then we need to find somebody that will, and we've got to replace them. But while they're there, by holding them accountable, by calling their office, going to see them, uh, writing them a letter, uh, any contact on any issue, we've got to get engaged in the process of taking our country back. And the way we do that is we look at the issues, we look at the bills that are coming and going to be voted on in the House and the Senate. We need to contact our members of Congress on both the House and the Senate about any of those issues. Say, so you said you'd do this and we expect you to do so. And if you don't, we're going to fire you and get somebody else. There's a group called FACO, and it's the Foundation for Applied Conservative Leadership. And what they teach in that is that the politicians need to be afraid of we the people. And they really do. Uh, by being afraid of we the people, because the major principle that most elected folks at all levels are going to stand firm on is their re-election bid. They're going to do anything. They're going to say anything. They're going to be anything to get re-elected or to get elected to begin with. That's what most politicians will do. This is exactly what we need to be remembering, right? Because this is where I've just recently published a book and it's called Nowhere Left to Run, 10 Steps to Survive Tyranny Today. And one of the points in there is that we, you have a civic duty if you want freedom. Um, and that you need to hold people accountable because when you get stuck in a short-term cycle of just reading news headlines, you actually forget about history, you forget about the past, you don't hold anyone accountable. And myself, I'm a mother and I, I, um, I've got two, two teenage children and I, I've had to hold them accountable. And that's as, as they grow up and deal with, you know, any, any parent, you've had to deal with tantrums, right? And, and I, I like to think that this is something that we're dealing with. And people say, how do you deal with these, these crazy politicians and things like that? And you say, well, if you think about it, if, you, if you're dealing with someone that's, that's a little bit crazy, you, you have to hold them accountable. You've got to stay calm more than anything. You've got to stay calm and know what you believe in and know what, what, what behavior you think is acceptable. Like you're right. saying, those four questions that you would ask yourself when you were voting, I can totally relate to that in my own way as a mother and, and, and think, well, I... This is the kind of behavior that I expect from the, my, my family and, and myself and, and basic, basic just good, good behavior to, to each other and to, to oneself, to look after oneself. And that personal accountability and responsibility, if we can teach our kids that, um, we can teach ourselves that, then we can absolutely hold our officials um, to that as well. The thing is, if we don't hold them accountable, then we deserve the, the Marxist government that we are getting today from both political parties, frankly, and it's just, it's got to stop and it's up to us to do so. So uh, by being knowledgeable, following what's going on in Washington, don't believe the press. I don't believe a thing that the press says today because all they're doing is painting a picture for the radical leftist Democrat party. They're carrying their message. They've become the, the uh, forum for the Democrats to promote their radical Marxism, their radical environmentalism, their radical uh, everything. And we're going to lose everything that this country was based upon if it's not uh, brought to a screeching halt. And we the people can do that. But you've got to be engaged. You've got to know exactly what you're talking about. When somebody promises that they're not going to vote for any of these continuing resolutions, Hold them accountable when they come up or whenever the, the um, omnibus bills come up. Say, you, you 
promise that you're going to stop this out of control spending, the CRs and omnibus bills and and most of the appropriations bills, whenever they come to the floor, which is seldom, uh, are funding government that the states and the people should be engaged in those issues, not the federal government. So we need to start demanding that those powers be sent back to the states and the people. We need to shut down the IRS. We need to shut down, and I've got a bill to do that too, by the way, but uh, we need to shut down the Department of Commerce and the Department of Labor and and uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and and um, I can go on and on and on. Most of what the federal government's doing today should be done by the states or the people, not the federal government. In fact, if a congressman or a senator were doing what they should be doing, according to the Constitution, they'd go to Washington every now and then to make sure we have a strong national defense, to make sure our borders are secure, to make sure that our monetary policy fosters a strong dollar and a strong, uh, vibrant free enterprise system unencumbered by government taxes and regulations. Basically very little else and go back home and get engaged in their regular job of being a merchant or being a lawyer or being a doctor or being a farmer, whatever they do. We should not have full-time politicians in Washington at all. And uh, we, we certainly need to start holding the courts uh, accountable as well. Uh, we need to write letters to judges. We need to write letters to the Supreme Court because they live in a political world and they uh, will bow to pressure. And in fact, we need to encourage our members of Congress to hold federal judges all the way up to the Supreme Court accountable too. Every single member of Congress, every single president, every single federal judge, all the way up to the Supreme Court. A lot of these solutions come from us and they all, they actually, they all come from us, don't they? And that's, that's where, when you're going to the midterm elections this, this, this coming month, think about that. Think about the candidates based on the constitution. Ask them about their stance on the constitution, but know the constitution. No, give them, what are a couple of questions, Dr. Brown, that, um, that voters could ask their candidates? Right now, crime, which is all tied up, of course, with the uh, open border, uh, is a huge issue for all Americans, no matter where you live, whether you live in Montana, Missouri, or in Midland, Texas. Uh, it's a huge issue. Uh, ask them, will you vote to secure the border? Will you fund securing the border? If our borders are not secure, we're not a secure nation. In fact, we're not even a nation. Uh, ask those questions. What will you do to try to make us energy independent as, as a nation again. Um, do you support um, our uh, ability to be energy independent like we were before by reopening the Keystone Pipeline? Actually, we're selling those pipes that were built to China. Uh, we they need to ask about China, too, by the way. We haven't even gotten into foreign affairs. But China is an economic and a military enemy of the United States. And Republicans need to be very vocal about that and need to introduce a bill, as I would have if I was back in Congress, to state that China is our enemy and start approaching China as an economic and military enemy. So is North Korea. So is Iran. So is Russia, and we need to treat them as enemies. Ask them those kind of questions about foreign affairs. So there's just so many issues, but the big thing is ask them, do you believe in the Constitution? Yes or no? Well, even the most radical Democrats say, yeah, I believe in the Constitution. Well, do you believe in this Constitution? Do you believe in, in truly limited government? Are you going to swear to uphold the Constitution. Which Constitution are you going to uphold? Barack Obama's, Mitch McConnell's Constitution, Nancy Pelosi's Constitution, and all of those basically are the same that says government can do anything. Or are you going to uphold the real Constitution? So we, we're we fixing it to go into this election, but we've got to start looking to the next election in 24. Who's going to be our next president? Who's going to be your next U.S. Senator? Who's going to be your 
next U.S. congressman. And if the one who is there now is not truly upholding the Constitution, we need to fire them. No matter what party they claim to be, we need to fire them or we need to reform them. One of the two. And the best way to do that is make them fearful of us. We need to contact them. And the more personal you can be through a visit, a personal phone call, a personal letter, whether it's written out by hand, that's more powerful than one that's done by a word processor. Uh, but any contact with your senator and your congressman is going to make a difference. If they get one or two letters or one or two little postcards, they don't pay any attention to those. But if they get hundreds, they really do. So we've got to write our congressmen. We've got to write our senators. We've got to tell them what we believe in. And we've got to tell them, if you don't do this, we're going to do everything we can to replace you. If people want to contact me, I've got a Friends of Paul Brown uh, Facebook political page that can go on Facebook, put my name, Paul Brown, it's B-R-O-U-N. Follow me on that Facebook page and they can contact me through uh, paul at paulbrown.com. Thank you, Dr. Brown. It has been a pleasure. And for everyone out there listening, you can follow us on all the social media platforms. Please like and subscribe and do all the click those buttons that you need to do. If you're listening on a podcast, click the five star review because that helps the, the show actually get found by more people. If you do a lower review, it's better not to do a review at all. And I won't be offended if you don't give a review. But if you want to give a review, please click the five star review. That's just how these algorithms work. So I appreciate you for doing that. And final words, yes, the Constitution. I love bringing solutions on this show. This is Today with Kay. I'm Kay Rubicek. We talk bad news, good news, and we talk solutions. So again, thank you, Dr. Brown, for joining us today and providing solutions and insight to the upcoming midterm elections, but also everything that we need to keep doing day to day on a long term basis. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm honored. God bless you. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you next time on Today with Kay.